type 2 diabetics, which represent over 90% of the people out there with diabetes, can always fast. Fasting with type 2 diabetes is not an issue. Uh, we have 100% success eliminating type 2 diabetes. That's relatively easy to eliminate. In fact, it's, it's over 90% correlated, type 2 diabetes, to obesity. So, so the, and she's obese. So the majority of people with diabetes of any kind are obese, and if they simply lose weight, their body has no trouble managing blood sugar. Um, if that's what's going on for her, it's no problem. It would definitely help her. You know, in four weeks' time, she would be, she'd be healed of diabetes. Um, and I use the, the little quotation marks. Why? Well, because whether she stays healed or not, you know, healed is, is a, it's a temporal thing. Like right now, she would have no diabetes once she finished. But if she goes home and eats the same stuff she's always eaten, she's going to wind up with diabetes again. Okay? Because di diabetes is simply what happens when a very toxic, overwhelmed, and usually dehydrated body can no longer keep up with a monumental task of out-processing garbage it was never designed to take in in the first place. Okay? Get the body clean, feed it correctly, and there's no blood sugar issues ever. Um, if that's type 2. Now, type 1 diabetes. Yeah, I mean, you know, for someone who's, if, so, if you're born with an inability to produce enough insulin, uh, type 1 diabetes is insulin-dependent diabetes. Uh, type 1 diabetics need to take insulin. And if someone's taking insulin and has been taking it for a long time, I typically won't fast them. Because why not? Well, it comes back to the law of efficiency. The law of efficiency says, uh, it predicts, uh, the law of efficiency says every species is always trying to get the most benefit for the least amount of effort. And this shows up all over the place, uh, throughout our lives, everywhere. It's always at work. But one of the ways it shows up is that if you give the body a crutch, it will become dependent on the crutch. So if you take someone who's maybe having trouble making enough insulin, and, and usually it's having trouble making enough insulin given the toxic, overwhelmed condition of their body and the diet that they're eating, and you start giving them insulin, the body says, quickly learns, oh, I don't have to do this job anymore. And the pancreas, over enough time, will lose the ability to produce all the insulin it needs to on its own. So if someone's been on insulin for 25 years, chances are good they're never going to make enough. But it reminds me of a client that uh, a man I met when I was uh, giving a lecture outside of Boston several years ago, uh, probably 10 or more years ago, in fact. And he jumped up at the end of my talk and said, you know, I, I, I want to I come fast with you. I said, okay, great. You know, tell, me, tell me about yourself. And he was an older man in his 70s. Um, he, was, he was obese. And he told me that he'd been a type 1 diabetic for more than 30 years. He was about uh, 50 to 75 pounds overweight. He'd been on insulin for more than three decades. And I said to him, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm not going to fast you. But, I mean, well, the first thing he did was he, he, he bought the Creating Perfect Health System, the information program that I offer. And he went home and he, he went through all the C CDs, all the DVDs. Now it's all digital. But he went through all the information and read everything and watched everything and listened to everything. And he made all the changes he could without fasting. And three months later, he called me. And he said, Lauren, this is Angela. You remember me? I said, of course I do. He said, well, I want you to know that two things have happened since I saw you. It's been three months since I saw you. Without trying, I've lost 50 pounds that I've been trying to lose for over 20 years and couldn't lose. Just by following your program, I've lost the weight. And I'm now using one-third as much insulin as I needed when I met you. And that's largely because his weight was way down. But he may need insulin for the rest of his life, but a lot less, which is a lot better. You know, if you have to use it, it's much better to use less than more. So um, if someone's been on insulin for a long time, I'm probably not going to fast them. But that's the, that's the minority of people. But that's type 1, you said. That's type 1. Type, type 2 diabetics, it, that's, it's not an insulin uh, insufficiency. 
Type 2 diabetics are making enough insulin, but their body becomes resistant, resistant to their own insulin. And they take medication to allow their insulin to work. Um, those people can fast with no problem, and so far, 100% of them have eliminated the problem. No, he didn't. He wasn't born with uh, type 1 diabetes. He developed it. You can develop type 1? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's changed. I mean, it used to be that type 1 diabetes was called juvenile diabetes and type 2 diabetes was called adult onset. But those terms no longer make any sense because 50% of type 2 diabetics are children. Why? Because they're overweight, yeah. Because they're obese. Um, remind me how old you are. I'm 28. 28. We're the same age. Uh, how old are you? 24. 24. So we're the same age, too. Uh, it's a good age. Actually, I'm... That's true, actually. I'm your age and your age put together. That's my age. Uh, but when I, was, when I was 12, you know, there, were, there was one or two fat kids on the playground. I'm willing to bet that 12 years ago, when you were 12, was a lot different than that. There were probably a lot of fat kids on the playground. It's changed a lot. Type 2 diabetes is now rampant in children. Literally half the cases in the U.S. are children because so many kids are overweight and obese. Okay? Didn't used to be that way. Um, Type, type 1 diabetes, juvenile diabetes, as it used to be called, uh, some children, some kids are born with it or develop it very early in life, but people have always developed it too. It's always shown up sometimes later on. Uh, probably what's true is that there, there was some sort of congenital issue. You, know, you might have inherited a tendency to maybe a weakness in the pancreas. Or maybe it's a genetic inheritance where the pancreas doesn't produce as much insulin as, or has a trouble producing as much insulin you know, as it would like to, because it's, it's weak overall. Um, but that shows up in life later on for people, probably because of poor diets and overall toxicity. When the pancreas is taxing, because the pancreas doesn't just do insulin, it also does all the body's enzymes, including digestive enzymes. So the worse someone's diet is, the more taxed the pancreas is going to be, and the harder time it's going to have managing its sugar as well. Okay?